It's speed reviews time and there's actually been a lot of new launches lately that have let me down. Don't get me wrong, we've got some standouts here today for sure, but most of this pile is stuff that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. So let me tell you my thoughts. Today I'm gonna split these up into categories and I'm defining them as love, like, and loathe. This way we can really define how highly I'm recommending these products because there are really only a few in here that I'm like, yes, love it, gotta have it. Most of them are just okay and then there are actually quite a few duds. So I hope this kind of tier distinction is helpful. But why don't we actually start, we'll go backwards and we'll start with the loathe category. These are the products that I am begging you, save your money. Okay, my first loathe, I'm calling this an emergency review. Okay, I normally would not be reviewing this product yet. I got this yesterday. I've tried it quite a few times since then, but typically I would not be reviewing a product that quickly, but I feel like I need to warn you about these because I have seen positive video after positive video after positive video, and I am baffled. This truly might be one of the hardest to use products I have ever tried. These are new from Milk Makeup. It's cool, I will give them that. They created a very cool product. It's called the Cooling Water Jelly Tint. Comes in four shades. It's very similar packaging to their other stick cheek products, but it has this very jiggly texture to it. It's a stain, so it's, it's very pigmented. I would describe the texture as a gummy, like something you would eat. It is very food-like, if you will. And I would say that's where a lot of the buzz is coming from. This is a very cool product, and I mentioned in a video recently how much we're kind of reverting back to like shock value when it comes to makeup. And that's really what I see happening with this. This has been all over my feed because it's a funky product, but I will tell you right now, this is practically unusable. By far the hardest to use product I've tried in a very, very, very long time. Now I have used this four separate times since getting it yesterday. I am trying to make this work and maybe I will come back to you in a month and redact this review. Maybe I will figure out how to use it and I'll come back on camera and say, wait, this is the greatest product. But after my four uses, I really wanted to warn you today before you waste your $24 on this in a couple days when it launches. So this was, okay, wait, ready? Jump scare, this was my first attempt. I know you're looking at that thinking, oh my gosh, do you look like someone gave you a kiss on the cheek with lipstick on? No, that is how poorly this product blends out. You have to work faster than humanly possible to blend out a product. Like you, you genuinely, you can't blend it out fast enough before it has set down. So this was me setting it down. This, the amount of time was, it was me reaching for a brush, grabbing it, oh, too late, you lost your chance. You need to be moving at like superhuman speed to get this product to blend. So I very quickly discovered you cannot just draw this on your cheek and try to blend it out. It will not budge. So then I tried, you know, let's take it on a brush and pick it up. Even still, the blend is very, very challenging. This is the least user-friendly product I have tried in so long. And oops, I'm wearing it today. I don't like the way my blush looks, but I was able to make it work through using the method of underpainting, meaning I applied this to my bare skin and then put foundation over top of it. So my blush looks nice and bold today. I do have this stained on my lips as well. The stain element of it is great. It has wonderful staying power, but you cannot blend this to save your life. Like truly, this is not for a beginner. I don't even know if this is for an advanced makeup wear. If you've been thinking, oh, my life is too easy lately. I need something to make my life harder. Maybe, maybe try these blushes. Otherwise, I hope I just saved you $24. Okay, I'm throwing this one in the loathe category, but it's a, it's a personal opinion. Fragrance is incredibly personal. Person, why was I gonna say personal? personal so there is a chance that you will fall in love with this fragrance but i myself am not a fan of the new scent from skylar that just came out this is called sunkissed dahlia this is a fruity floral scent i'll pop the notes on the screen though i will say they seem a bit deceiving to me when i read the notes before smelling this i thought it might be something i would enjoy especially considering the base notes they include custard amber vanilla sandalwood and even though i don't typically gravitate to like fruity floral scents i thought that might balance it out well but I, in my opinion, it does not. This is a very showery scent. I would say it's reminiscent of a shampoo, maybe even a soap. It transports me to like, 
my middle school self drenching my body in a Bath and Body Works body spray. So if that's what you're after, you might like this fragrance, but nothing about this scent is giving $90. Did not enjoy this. Don't think it's a very complex scent the way I was hoping based on the notes I read, but don't like this one. Fragrance is very personal though, so if you like that one, please let me know. My next dud in the loathe category, I'm so sad to announce. I was very disappointed by this. I finally picked up the brown shade of the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara, and I thought this was gonna be the answer to my brown mascara hunt. I'm actually wearing this currently, and I think it's just translating as black. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a short link down below where I compared this and the three other brown mascaras I've tested out in the last couple of weeks. I did swatch comparisons so you can see this one if you're after like a chocolatey brown, I think you'll be pretty disappointed by this. I would say more so this looks like a lighter black on the lashes, which some people are looking for. And if that's you, you might enjoy this. But I would say even the effect on my lashes is less bold than the regular version of the Better Than Sex mascara. Someone left me a comment. They were like, you know, when I wear that mascara, it's like it disappears from my lashes. It's like my eyelashes are eating it. And I would have to agree with that. The initial application looks pretty and separated, but I don't know where it goes throughout the day. There is no longevity with this particular mascara. And for $29, skip this. And with that, we will progress into the like category. This is for products that maybe didn't change my life, but there's not necessarily anything wrong with them. It's not that I wouldn't recommend them. I just wouldn't recommend them as highly as the love category that we'll get to in the end. So let's go ahead and start off with the brown mascara from Tower 28. Now I'll go ahead and share comparison swatches between this and the Too Faced. Pigment wise, it's pretty similar, but I prefer the way the Tower 28 looks on my lashes to the Too Faced by a lot. I also find the Tower 28 a lot more effective in holding a curl if that's something that's important to you. I find the Too Faced one completely unravels my curl almost immediately, whereas Tower 28 has a lot better lift to it. I'm sure that's partially because the applicator on this is curved, which I find to be beneficial in maintaining a curl on your lashes. So I still don't think this is the best brown mascara. My favorite one I found so far is the e.l.f. Lash Extender in brown, but this is definitely not bad. I would say it's just more so like a less pigmented version of their black mascara. If that's what you wanted, you will like this. But if you're looking for a really noticeable brown pigment, I don't think you'll like this. All right, the Fenty Concealer. I thought I was going to like this more than I do. And I've found this to be a pretty finicky product. Sometimes when I wear this, it looks beautiful. And other times when I wear it, I get a lot of separation. I find it to be pretty particular in terms of the prep that I'm doing beforehand. I need to really prepare my under eyes for this product. I'm wearing it today and I do think that it looks nice, but I find it can definitely look a bit drying on my under eyes. And for the $30 price point, you know my absolute favorite number one holy grail concealer is the same price, the Natasha Denona concealer. And I'm like, if you're gonna get one or the other, I think Natasha Denona wears better, sits better, higher pigment, doesn't look dry, is a lot smoother. I really do enjoy the applicator of this one and I wanted to enjoy it more than I do. I don't think it's a bad concealer, but it definitely has the potential to look pretty dry on the under eyes. So that's how it ended up in the light category. I'm sure I will continue to use it, but it definitely is not a standout for me. Okay, you might be bummed to hear this, but I'm putting these Summer Fridays lip oils in like and not love. So this is their newest launch. These are $26, comes in four different shades. And when I sat down to film, I had this one on, but I feel like it's all gone. So we'll go ahead and reapply it. This shade is called Pink Cloud. And what you're gonna notice immediately is that these are not so pigmented. So even though there are four shades, they're very, very sheer. I notice a difference in swatches, but the difference on the lips is rather minimal. I don't know that you need all four based on how low the level of pigment is. You're not gonna notice a pretty significant difference between the shades. And this I do enjoy. It's definitely a thin formula for a lip oil. It's very thin, so I don't find it to have 
the best longevity. Be prepared to reapply pretty frequently. That being said, I do think it sits very nicely on the lips. I think it smooths out any lip lines. I think my lips look nice and juicy. I really enjoy the applicator of this. It has this like flat edge to it that makes applying it so satisfying. You know, the texture definitely feels very like slippy, definitely more oily than a lot of lip oils. And I'm already anticipating the question of which one do you go with? The new lip oils or the original, uh, what is this called? The lip butter balm? You guys, this, this one all the way. These are fine but they're not a standout to me. These have not changed my makeup routine. I don't like them more than this. I find that this has more hydration, better longevity, similar levels of pigment, actually probably more pigment. If you're looking at like the, let me grab it, the deeper shades, I also have cherry. This is more pigmented than the lip oils. So these are not bad, but they're, they've only made it into the like category. Unfortunately, they did not get the love stamp of approval today. And now you're asking yourself, okay, well, what did? Let me tell you. And let's start off with the Natasha Denona, my mini dream palette. I'm wearing this today, but you probably wouldn't know because I am only wearing this shade right here. I did a very simple eye look today, but I have been wearing this most days recently. I am such a fan of the five pan palettes from Natasha Denona. They're like, they never let me down. They are some of the most used palettes in my entire makeup collection. And this one is no exception. I know you look at the pans and you think, okay, it's a neutral palette, which it, which it is. Don't get me wrong. But surprisingly, I do find that these shades have the slightest like purpley plum undertone to them that makes it stand out in my collection amongst all my other neutral eyeshadow palettes. Like, yes, this is a color story we've seen before, but something about it on the eyes still feels very fresh and exciting whenever I use it. One call out I will make that I find to be the case with almost all of the five pan palettes, you are not getting much versatility. Most of the looks you make with this are going to look the same because of the fact that these two shades are not that different and these two, wait, no, these two shades are not that different. So a majority of the eye looks are going to be similar. I do not mind that because that is my makeup style. But if you're looking for range, just know that you're not going to receive that with this palette. But the colors are beautiful. The blend is great. It's the Natasha Nona quality that I love. And this has become an instant favorite for me. But my other favorites were big surprises for me because in theory, I should not like either of them. Starting with this fragrance. Who remembers the beginning of the video when I said I don't like a fruity or floral scent? This is both, but somehow it works. That being said, I would say if that is typically the scent profile you like, there is a chance you will not like this because I normally don't like that and I like this. Do you know what I mean? But this is from Fleur. This is their new fragrance, Mood Ring. The keynotes listed on Sephora are fruit gummies, orange flower, and glazed musk. And I find that that musk scent really balances out some of these sweeter, fruity tones in here. Tones. Here I am talking like it's like makeup. I didn't even think I would like this at first when I was sniffing it in the bottle, but it wears so differently on the skin. I would say the dry down of this is just so delicious. I get compliments every single time that I wear this. This is one of my most complimented fragrances by far. It feels a bit more summery, maybe not so seasonally appropriate at this current moment, but that doesn't matter to me. I've been wearing it anyways, highly recommend it. Definitely like it more than this new one from Skylar. The other one I didn't really think that I would like is the new shade of the Easy Bake Powder from Huda Beauty. And the reason I didn't anticipate liking this is that it's really not designed for my skin tone. I had a feeling when I purchased this that I probably would not be able to wear it, but. I'm gonna tell you right now, even on a light skin tone, I still think this powder is beautiful if you want a peach effect. This is their newest shade. I did purchase the mini, so the packaging is a bit different than the full size. It has this included puff so that you can touch up on the go. I don't really use this puff. I end up just kind of like dumping this out and applying it like that, but just know. The packaging from the mini is very different than the full size. You do not have a cap to pour the product into, so just know that can kind of be a bit of a nuisance, but this was designed to be an additional shade for under eye brightening. So I'm sure you're familiar with their super viral pink shade and they wanted to create a similar shade, but in peach for warmer undertones. So that is what this is designed for. It is designed for medium to tan skin with warm undertones. And on that skin tone, it's supposed to be very brightening on the under eye. 
Now, even on my fair skin, I can still wear this. It is like verging on being too dark. So I would say I prefer to go ahead and mix this with a translucent powder or a powder that is more my shade to get a kind of a lightened up version of this peach. But wow, I have been loving a peach under eye. I've been such a big fan of the pink under eye to begin with. There's something about the way that it like fuses together your blush and your under eye. It creates the most smoothing finish right here. It is like blurred and perfected. This formula, I will warn you, it is very matte. You have to like a matte powdery look, but I do. And this one is great. It is not so matte where it looks like cakey and dry, but just know it's going to be, it's going to be, it's a powder. It is a powdery powder, but if you want your under eyes looking like filtered and perfected, this is the one. And I've been loving the peach. I will say if you are any paler than I am, this will not work for you. I can like make it work, but again, it's not really designed for me, but I've still been loving it anyways. I also find that the peach tone is nice for color correcting a bit of blue on the under eyes, and I've been using this every single day. If you've tried any of these products, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.